The Yellowstone Hell, Coulter's Tales of the First European American to Step Foot in Yellowstone. This is on the latest Caldera Chronicles, May 20th, just in, on USGS Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. As we know, these Caldera Chronicles come out every week. It's a weekly column written by the USGS scientists and collaborators of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. This week's contribution is from Cole Messa, PhD student at Ken Sims, professor of geology and geophysics, and they're both at the University of Wyoming. As we know, the Yellowstone supervolcano sits at the northwest corner of the border of Wyoming with Montana and uh, Idaho. Now, uh, where we have a, a lot of uh, quick swarms lately, but we'll get into that uh, right after this one. This. Uh, uh, report. Now imagine for a moment that you could turn back the clock of time and you go back 200 years in early America, 200 years or so, and embark on a journey from east to west across North America. Now I've flown east to west and flying over the Grand Canyon, I could only imagine what the settlers were going through, how they managed to get across that is unbelievably astonishing to me. I just could not fathom what they went through. It was physically impossible. It was a, it was a matter of man against nature type of thing. Now, um, you would be, uh, so if we were putting ourselves back 200 years, you'd be unaware of what lay beyond the great plains of the American heartland. And obviously, you would be oblivious to the Rocky Mountains thwarting your path. Imagine, though, that you had never heard of a supervolcano, especially Yellowstone, or even geysers and hot springs. And there, as let's remember, there are 60% of the hot springs of the world, geysers are there in Yellowstone. And as far as you were concerned, nature was epitomized by the patchy, deciduous forests and the rolling hills uh, of the Appalachian Mountains. So during your march west, you would find yourself alone at the doorstep of another world. The smell of rotten eggs, that's the sulfur in the air. Game would be abundant. The ground soft but warm beneath your feet, your aching feet. Warm because of, of course, the magma underneath you. Quite, quite close to the surface, actually. That's why you're, you're, the, the, the ground would be so warm. And all around, are jets of steaming water and pools of colorful splendor. So would anyone ever believe if you told them what you saw? So goes the life of the first mountain man you see, Yellowstone. To see Yellowstone was John Coulter. So the report goes. John Coulter was the first man to ever see, uh, uh, the, the foreign man that is, European-American to see Yellowstone. It was 1803 when John Coulter already a skilled hunter and a scout, joined the Corps of Discovery, the Lewis and Clark Expedition, before it set out from St. Louis, Missouri, in an effort to document the lands of the newly acquired Louisiana Purchase. Upon reaching the Pacific coast of modern-day Washington and Oregon, the expedition began its return trip to the Mandan villages of modern-day North Dakota, and it is here, in 1806, that John Coulter made a choice that would etch his name into history forever. The company encountered a couple of fur trappers, Forrest Hancock and Joseph Dixon, who were planning to follow the Missouri River in search of game. Coulter joined up to lead the two fur trappers and they embarked northward along the Missouri River. The partnership lasted only a few months, however, and by early 1807, Coulter was on his way back to St. Louis. As he approached the Platte River, Coulter encountered another trading company run by Manuel Lisa and included some former members of the Corps of Discovery. They were en route to the Yellowstone River, and Coulter again turned west back to the wilderness. The group would build Fort Raymond at the intersection of the Yellowstone and Bighorn Rivers and it was from here that John Coulter set out alone late in 1807 to establish trade relations with the Crow uh, Native American Indian nation. During the next year, Coulter's 
nearly 500 mile route would take him across the Continental Divide into what today is Jackson Hole and eventually over Teton Pass into modern day Idaho. Coulter would then venture back across the Teton Range and head north along Jackson Lake into what is now the Yellowstone National Park, making Coulter the first European American to set eyes on the Teton Range and Yellowstone region. Most notably, Coulter's journey took him along Yellowstone Lake, where he, uh, he would have encountered abundant thermal features like hot springs and geysers. As we know, Yellowstone Lake rests on top of the uh, Volc Yellowstone volcano caldera. The magma chamber is right there. I mean, the roof of the magma chamber is right under Yellowstone Lake. So um, he took uh, the journey along Yellowstone Lake, where he would have encountered abundant thermal features, hot springs, and geysers alone in this completely uncharted territory. One can only begin to imagine the emotions that Coulter was surely experiencing. I'm sitting here reading this, and I'm wondering, why did he do all this alone? I mean, it's very it would have been very dangerous for him. To, at least there would have been two together, two people at least, the minimum. Because you're going into an uncharted territory. Anything could happen to you. Uh, an accident or something, or a snake bite, God forbid, you know. So anyway, going on with this, there is much debate among the historical community regarding what exactly Coulter saw during his lonesome trek through the Yellowstone wilderness. One thing is certain, Coulter's tales of fire and brimstone would seldom be accepted by the people with whom he shared his tales of adventure. In fact, a region of land along the Shoshone River that today is marked by mostly extinct thermal features is known almost appropriately as Coulter's Hell, a name that started as a joke by Coulter's disbelieving audiences, but is now a mark of respect for Coulter's incredible journey. So you now have to ask yourself, if a mountain man told you the story of a place deep in the mountains of the American West, where water spewed from the ground with such force and heat that the earth shook beneath your feet, would you believe him? It is this sense of wonder and disbelief of a place so extraordinary that drives our reverence for the first national park. It is this idea that fuels the need to protect conserve and study Yellowstone, for it is a uniquely special environment that no matter how many times one lays eyes on it, continues to challenge our very understanding and perception of the natural world. I've never been there, but uh, I uh, love Yellowstone just by uh, doing all these uh, videos and articles on it, and it looks to be a fabulously beautiful place. Now, William Clark's, uh, this is the map that we have here, is from William Clark's 1814 map, indicating the route of John Coulter during the winter of 1807 and 1808. It's from the Library of Congress, Geography and Map Division in Washington, D.C. Now, uh, we'll follow with some activity having to do with what's going on in Yellowstone. Now, of course, he would have also seen the petrified trees in Yellowstone. These were the ones that were from the older volcano, from volcanism that was uh, 10, 20, 30 million years ago, the Absaroka volcanic field that dominated the region that is now Yellowstone National Park. And as we know before that, 20 million years ago, the hotspot was all the way down uh, back towards uh, California around where Long Valley Caldera is today, and that hotspot moved all the way up through Nevada, through Idaho, all the way down to uh, northeast where uh, Yellowstone is to be found today. And uh, in fact, the uh, southwest corner of Idaho had, has, still has another supervolcano uh, where the eruption was a tremendous amount from what the geologists say. And that was about 12 million years ago. That was the midpoint of where it, uh, from where it is now. So uh, this, even long before Yellowstone got there with this uh, new hotspot that's there now, was uh, way back w when, was, was even again another volcano, the Absaroka volcano. He may have seen the dikes that go on for miles on end. Uh, this Absaroka volcanic field dominated the region 50 million years ago. 
So uh, he would have been fascinated by all this beauty that he would have seen there. Amazing. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.